All right, if you've properly downloaded the zip file here that's on my desktop, then you should have this fabulous website about the band Europe available to you. So this is the website we're going to manipulate today using JavaScript. We're going to do three things. Uh, depending on how much time we have, we'll, we'll maybe do a couple other things. We'll see how it goes. But thing number one, this list of the band members down here, I want to make it to where I can toggle that on and off. So I want to be able to click on this where it says show members, and I want it to be able to hide the members. And then if I click it again, it'll show them again. I'll just be able to toggle that back and forth. That's one thing. Another thing I want to do is we're going to make a button here that will change this font. Okay, we'll put a little button down in the code in a minute, and when you click on the button, it'll change the font. And then the last thing is I'm going to put another button. When I click on it, it will change this image. So it'll just toggle the image back and forth. That's, that's the three things we're going to do. Before we do that, there's a couple things I want to make sure we understand. Okay, first of all, let me show you this cool image here. All right, what we're looking at here is called the document object model, the DOM. <laughs> and the DOM is just a, uh, it's a, I don't know if paradigm is the right word, but it's, it's a way of looking at your document, okay? The document is your HTML code, your whatever.html. That's the document. This is the hierarchy of the document in a parent-child relationship, right? So the very, very root, we've, we've been talking about the root element is HTML, right? Well, the HTML element actually has a parent. It's called the document. It's the document that it's inside of, right? So if I look in here, my HTML... Yeah, that's the root element, but this whole page, this file, is its parent, which makes sense because the HTML is inside of it, right? All right, so you have the document right here. Then you have the root element, HTML. That The HTML only has two children, right? What are they? The head and the body. Everything else should be inside of there, right? So the head tag and the body tag. So those are its children. Now notice the head element has a child. There's more than one, but it listed here as a title. It could also have link. It could also have script. It can also have style, right? All those ones we've talked about. There's the meta tag and a bunch of other ones. Those are all children of the head tag. Okay, the body tag has the H1 as a child. It has the paragraph, it, all the tags we know, right? That we've been using and programming for the past several weeks, months even. Those are all children of the body tag. But notice something interesting here. The anchor tag it has natural children itself, even if there's nothing in between it. So, for example, the href, it's actually a property of it. We already know this, right? The href is a property of the anchor tag. But in this hierarchy, it's sort of a, kind of like a child to it, okay? Um, what this allows us to do, the document object model has an API, an application programming interface, that allows us to connect our JavaScript through this API bridge, if you will, to the HTML so we can use JavaScript code to manipulate the HTML, to manipulate this document you're looking at on the screen here. So what that means is, in my code here, let's take a look at the image for a minute, this, uh, this line 11. Image is a child of body, right? Yes? This means yes? Yep, okay, good. Body is a child of HTML, right? HTML is a child of the document, okay? Well, also, a child of image, you could, you could refer to it that way, is the source property and the alt property, right? That's another thing. We can have an alt equals something, right? We can have a title, right? There's all kinds of other properties we can have in here. Those all exist as part of the image object. So those who have a background in programming in 1410 particularly, uh, Java, the object is it's similar to what you're used to in the, in the object world, okay? And so... When I have my hands on this image, I have my hands on all of it. I have my hands on the source, the alt, all of the properties. Anything the image knows about, I have my hands on it. If I can just get my hands on that image tag. So how do I get my hands on the image tag, right? That's the question. That's what we're going to learn today. Um, but that's using the DOM API. And so just a quick little um, understanding of what the API is all about. Um, I think we've talked about this in this class, but maybe not. If you've ever purchased something like on Amazon or something like that, and it has order tracking, right? You go into your Amazon purchase and it says, click here to track your order. Well, what you're seeing is stuff that's pulled in from the UPS's API, the, you know, the, 
U.S. Parcel Service or whatever it's called, United Parcel Service, um, UPS, the brown trucks, right? Okay. You're, the, what's happened is the people who created the UPS website and all of its properties and its code, they built an application programming interface that allows you access to a teeny piece of their database. Okay. And so now on my site, if I own a site and I want to have tracking information, I just have to get an API key from UPS. So I contact UPS and say, hey, I'm a developer. I want, I ship products on my website. I want to be able to show my customers shipping information, right? And so in order to do that, I need an API key, which now I have the key, I put it in my code, and it magically pulls in stuff from UPS, displays the tracking number and all kinds of other stuff, right? So I'm, I'm recording this, but I, so I'm a little hesitant to do what I'm about to do, but what the heck, I'll do it anyway. I'm gonna go to a website that actually uses this. Um, this is my, um, my a magic website that I have a wholesale account with called Murphy's Magic, All right? So when I sign in here, um, I'll go to my order history. This is where you get to see how much money I spend on magic. All right. So what? take a look. This is a, my most recent package I ordered. Um, and uh, I'll probably gray most of this stuff out for the video, but I'll leave the tracking number there. Um, so this tracking number is actually being pulled in from UPS's website. If I click on it, it does not go to UPS. This goes to um, this little page, or maybe it's a UPS bridge, this iShip website. But it has all this information that's all embedded right into the Murphy's Magic website. So I don't have to log into, like, for example, if I had this here, I go to ups.com. Normally what you do is you come in here and you say where you're at, and then you want to track a package, so you type it in right here. I think I pasted it in there. I don't know if I made it or not. All right, and it's showing that it was delivered at what time and so on and so forth, right? But uh, with this thing built into Murphy's Magic here, I don't have to worry about that, okay? I just It's just embedded in there. So how did that work? The programmers at Murphy's Magic call up UPS and say, hey, we're developers that ship products and we use UPS. So uh, can we have an API key? And usually there, there's some places there's a fee, other places there isn't. Either way, they get an API key and that's in their code, their PHP code or whatever code they're using. Looks like they're using ASP, uh, ASPX. So in their .NET code or whatever, they have this key that is, that's a secure portal bridge, whatever you want to call it, pipe between Murphy's and UPS. UPS, because of the API key, says, okay, here's a few little things we'll give you, right? And, and then we, you can display them on your website. So that's what APIs do. Um, Twitter has an API, right? Facebook has an API. If you ever see, have ever been to a website that says log in using your Facebook account, right? Instead of creating an account, you just log in with Facebook. That's using the Facebook API. Um, I have a Facebook API. I have, I have some stuff embedded onto some of my sites using Facebook. I, you can you get a Twitter API um, key that lets you access their API, which will show um, recent tweets on your web page or something like that. So there's tons of different things you can do to bridge the gap between two sites. What it comes down to, Murphy's Magic is a magic website. UPS is a shipping website. The two have nothing to do with each other. Well, UPS is smart enough to know that lots of websites use their service. So they built a bridge that lets it bridge any other website at once. So the programmers at Murphy's just have to know what are the rules of that bridge. How do they know that? They read the documentation from UPS. Okay. So what does only that have to do with JavaScript and the DOM and all that? The DOM has an API. The DOM is a way of looking at your web page, and JavaScript is a way of interacting with your web page. And the portal through which you do that is the, the DOM API. So the DOM API has built-in functions that we're going to use. We're going to use just one of them today. Um, in fact, we'll probably only use just one throughout the entire semester. Um, that one function is not a JavaScript function. It's a DOM function, but it works in JavaScript, and it allows us to interact with our web page dynamically. Okay? So there's my little spiel about APIs, right? Any question about that? Okay, let me close out Murphy's here so I can get all my personal information off the video. Okay, so here's what's happening. In our code, what I wanna do is I wanna make this thing here clickable. 
So when I click on it, this hides, right? So we're gonna use that API function in just a minute that I was telling you about. Just generally speaking, how would I hide this? If I didn't, wasn't gonna use JavaScript, I just, with the stuff you guys already know, how would you hide that? Okay, we could just make, we don't even have to put in a div, right? We could just make the UL display none, right? So I could give it a class, like class equals hide or something like that, and then go into my CSS, and dot hide is uh, display none, something like that. That makes sense? Okay. So let's just refresh the page now. Let's go here, close this. And now it says show members, and they're hidden, so if I click on it, I want it the members to show. Right now, nothing will happen if I click on it, but that's the goal. So that we'll start there. The members are by default hidden, all right? And so now, here's what I want to do. When I click here, I want something to happen. There's actually an HTML property or an HTML attribute, property and attribute, same thing, called onClick. So I can put the onClick attribute in my HTML, and I can literally put JavaScript right in those quotes. But that would get ugly and messy, right? So what we're going to do is put a function in there, and we're going to build the function in our JavaScript file. So when I click on this, I want it to call a function. So I want it to call a function that I'm making up right now off the top of my head called toggle members, right? That's the function we're going to create. You can call it whatever you want, but that just seems to be a fitting description, okay? So now we've, we've got this thing where if I click on H2, the toggle member function is going to fire. Let me show you something real quick. When I, um, I'm going to open up the console on the right here. Click on console. When I refresh the page and then I click on show members, watch the console on the right. I get an error. It says that toggle members is not defined, right? That's a function we haven't defined yet. So we're going to go define that in our CSS or in our JavaScript file right here. So I'm assuming you guys have watched the first two videos, and moving forward, I will assume that you are keeping up with watching the videos, and I will try really hard to get them published right away so you don't have to wait too long. But um, each, uh, each um, class, we're building on what we've covered before, right? So if that's the case, hopefully you remember the answer to this question. What's the very first thing I'm going to do if I want to make a function in my JavaScript? Well, that's a little too quiet for what I was expecting. What's the first thing I have to type? Function. Yeah, very good. Function. Then I type the name of the function, right? So I say, this is, line two is me saying, JavaScript, I am declaring a function, right? Remember, everything's a declaration, some sort of a statement, right? Uh, everything's a statement, and this is a declaration. And the function is called toggle members. Members. And then we have our curly braces, right? Now, for you Java folks, that's the method signature. That's it. If, if you're familiar with that, that terminology, that's the method signature. In our case, the function signature. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about with method, method signatures, that's okay. Just know that whenever you create a function in JavaScript, this is what it looks like. The word function, the name, parentheses, curly braces. Now, sometimes there will be stuff in the parentheses. Not today, but sometimes. And in the future there will be, but not today. All right, so let's just focus on what goes in the curly braces for now. So remember our goal here. When I click on show members, I want the, that UL to appear, okay? So here's that, that API function. This is the only thing you have to memorize when it comes to interacting with your document. We want to call the document, so we type in document dot this is the API function, it's called get element by ID. Notice the case sensitivity, right? Lowercase g, capital E, capital B, capital I, okay? This is the dumb API function called get element by ID, and I'll explain what it's doing in just a minute. And then parentheses, and you'll have something in quotes here. This piece right here that's on line four, you just have to me remember it, just memorize it, okay? Once you have that memorized, all the rest of the way we interact with the DOM, you will not have to memorize, okay? Eventually, we're going to add some stuff to the end of this, right? We're going to say dot something, dot something else, dot something, right? We're going to continue like this, but those dot somethings, whatever is going to go there, you don't have to memorize. I'm going to show you a really cool trick 
to get that stuff without having to think, okay? So we'll get to that in a minute. So document.getElementById. Let's talk about what that means. This says, go look in the document. So where's the document? Yeah, it's our index file. How does JavaScript know that it's this file right here? Um, well, that's a good guess, but not, that's not quite right. That's a, that is a good guess, but not quite. Line seven. line seven, yeah. Because what line seven is, it's the equivalent of me just doing that, like putting the code in the HTML, okay? So line seven is the equivalent of having all the JavaScript inside the HTML. So where is the document? It's wherever the JavaScript is located. The JavaScript is located in the HTML file here, right? So that's where the document is. So it's saying right here, look in the document. Bam, we're there. Look for it. So get an element, right? What's an element? Child. What is it? Child. Uh, be more specific. Parent. Yes, but or we call those oh, close. Or Tags, there we go. Right, an element is a tag. Yeah, good. I knew you had the right idea. I just wanted to, I'm going to pull it out of you and make you say it, right? Okay, so, yeah, so we're saying look in the document, get a tag, basically is what we're saying. What tag? The one that has this ID right here in the quotes. Well, I haven't put one in there yet, so let's put one. So come over here. What tag am I trying to manipulate? This guy right here, right? I'm trying to hide that or show it or whatever. So I'll, let's give it an ID. We'll call it um, members or something like that. Call it whatever you want. Okay. So in the UL, I've given it an ID. Now what I can do in my JavaScript is this. Document.getElementById members. This literally means look in the document. Get the tag that has the ID of members. So now this line four right now, what does it mean to get the tag? It means that that line just grabbed this. It grabbed the UL and everything it knows about, right? What is all the stuff it knows about? We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. But it grabbed everything. So now I have this big ball of a UL, if you will. It's an object. And it, for the 1410 people, it's an object, exactly what you might be thinking. Okay, But it's an object that has access to millions of things. Not literally millions, but tons of things. Okay. So let's, let's pick one of those things. What I want to do is get a hold of this class right here. So there's actually a, an attribute called class name. Now, I told you you will not have to memorize this thing right here, this class name. You won't have to memorize that. I'll show you later how to find that without having to think, okay? But I just happen to have a few of them memorized because I've you know, done this a few times, right? So I'm going to set the class name equal to nothing. So that's going to remove the hide class from that UL. This is the UL right here. Everybody see that? This is the UL's class name. This is the value of the UL's class name. So go get the UL that has the, the go get the object that has the ID of members. Look at its class name, set it to nothing. The moment I set it to nothing, what happens? The hide class is not applied anymore, and so it goes back to the default behavior of displaying it. Right, because the default behavior is display block. That's it. Now, we're going to need to add some more to it, but that will make it something happen once. Okay, so let's refresh. Now, watch is on the left here when I click it, and the members appear. Okay, now let's watch what happens over here on the right. Let's expand this a little bit. And right here. Okay, so I'm going to refresh. Oh, man. Okay, watch right here. See the class where it says hide right there? Okay, when I click on the left, I'm clicking on the left. You don't look on the left. Look right here where the blue is highlighted. Okay, watch what happens when I click. It removed hide. The JavaScript went in there and removed hide from the DOM version of the web code. This on the right here is the DOM version of the code. If I look at the actual code, you'll notice hide is still there. Right? Hide still, whoops, whoa, that's huge. Hide is still there. 
But in the DOM version here, the live version that the viewer is looking at in the web page, it's not there, okay? All right, so now one quick thing I wanna do here. Um, I don't like that it just has the property class sitting there by itself with nothing assigned to it. So what I'm gonna do, there's other ways around it, but I'm, I don't wanna get too involved in that. So we're gonna do just a little simple, we'll call it a cheat if you will. What I wanna do is in my style, I'm gonna create a class called show and it's gonna be display block. block. Okay. And so what'll happen here in my JavaScript now, rather than changing this to nothing, I'm gonna change it to show. Everybody see that? So that way it won't just leave the, the word class sitting there in the tag, it'll say class equals show. And that it will have the same effect, but now we can watch something cool in the console. Okay, let's refresh. Let's get the inspector open. Refresh and go down here to this. So we'll take a look on the right side here where it says class equals hide. I'm going to click on the left. You watch what happens over there. It changes it to show. Then it changes it. it won't, well, it won't change it again because we haven't done that part of the code. But it changed it to show when I clicked on it. Okay. All right. So far, how are we feeling? We good? Here's the JavaScript code. Here is the CSS. And here is the HTML. All we've done in the HTML is there's three things really. We added this on click. We added the ID equals members and we added a class called hide. So now that we've got the basics here where I can create this little thing where I click it once and it shows the members. What's what's wrong though? I, I, if I click it, nothing else happens. So what are we missing? Yeah, we want to toggle back and forth, right? So a couple things. First of all, it'd be nice when the members are showing here, if this text actually said hide members, right? So every time I switch it back and forth, it says hide, show, hide, show, hide, show, right? So we can do that part real quick. So again, we're going to target something in our in our document, document dot get element by ID, right? Something. What ID are we going to target? What I want to change that show hide members thing. So what what am I targeting? The uh, H2, right? Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, but there's no ID there, is there? So let's put an ID. We'll go ID equals members heading or something like that, right? Call it, again, call it whatever you want. I'm going to go with that. So now I've given the H2 an ID so I can target it with that API function. So I come here, and now I'm targeted. Now right here, this line of code, line 5, is that H2 object in all of its glory, right? All the things that go along with it. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you what all those things are. It's pretty impressive what you have access to. Okay, now, in this particular case, I don't want to change the class name. I want to change the text that's inside of it, right? I want to change the inner text, and that's actually what the property is called, inner text. Now, again, you do not have to memorize inner text, class name. I'm going to show you a cool trick in a few minutes to help you get access to anything you want without having to remember anything, okay? Okay, so the inner text, I wanted to say hide. All right, so that's what we have so far. Now, if I run it, refresh, I click on show members, it shows them, and then the text says hide. That way, theoretically, next time I click on it, it'll hide the members, which it won't do right now because we haven't built that part. But conceptually, does everybody follow what just happened? We good? Okay, now, real quick, there's a couple things I want to tweak before we get back into the JavaScript. I don't like that I can select this text. I don't like that I can select any of that text. There's a cool little property to kill that. And in the CSS, just I just do it in my, my star reset here. It's called user select, none. That's not fully supported by all the browsers, but it's close enough that I'm, I'll put it in there, okay? I mean, if it's not supported, it just doesn't work, so it's no big deal. But user select colon none, that will get rid of the ability for users to select and highlight the text. Because that just makes, I don't like that way that looks when that happens. So if I, whoops, save, refresh. 
Now I can, I'm trying to select them, I can't, right? No matter what happens here, I can't select that text. Second thing I want is I don't like that that's a pointer, like it's, a, it's an arrow. I want that to be a finger so it looks like it's supposed to be clicked. So again, that's super easy to do. We know how to do that in our CSS. Just the um, H2 with the, with the um, ID of members um, heading. We want the cursor to be a pointer. Pointer, okay? Good enough. Refresh. Now it's a pointer, right, when I hover over it, okay? All right, so when I click that, it shows the members, and then when I click it again, nothing happens. We want something to happen, of course. So looking at the code here, what's the, the if, if it's already showing the members, we want to hide the members, right? So we want the code that would run in that scenario. I'm just going to copy and paste this. That code will look like this. Everybody agree? That second block, those two lines on line seven and eight, that's what, the sec that's what we want to run the second time, right? And then we want to go back and forth between this code and this code, this code and this code. One time I click it, that one runs. The next time I click it, that one runs. Then this one, then this one. All right, conceptually, how do we feel about that? We good? Any questions about that? Particularly if you don't have a programming background? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Or speak now or speak later. I'm not going to make you hold your peace. Okay. Questions so far? So does everybody understand why this is what we need to do, that, that, why that's the opposite of line four and five, right? And to make it a little bit more clear, I'm going to change this to say click to show members. And so this is going to say click to hide members. Click to show members. All right, that makes it a little bit more clear what's going on there. Okay. So the question then becomes, how do I make sure that this only runs the right time and this only runs the right time, right? I only want this one to run in one situation. I want this one to run in the other situation. So non-programmers first. So if you're a programmer with a programmer background or whatever, uh, hold your tongue for just a minute. Uh, the rest of you, the question is, what am I going to need to do to be able to run one block of code one time, the other block of code another time. We've, we've talked about this already. Any thoughts? Yeah. An if statement. Yeah, exactly right. Okay, an if statement. Okay, so we're going to do, like, if something, we'll talk about the something in a minute, then do this, right? And then otherwise, we're going to do this other one. Okay, we'll talk about what the, the if condition will be in just a second. But this is the basic idea, right? If some condition is met, this is what I want to run. Otherwise, I want to run this. Okay? Well, what condition could we check for to determine that we want to run this? Yeah, we could check the class name. So let's grab this. And we can say, is the class name, notice the double equals here. I can ask the question, is the class name equal to hide? Because if it's equal to hide, I want to switch it to show, right? So I'm saying, go in the document. Look for a tag that has an ID of members. Check its class name. Is its class name equal to hide? It is? Okay, then run this line of code, which says, go look in the document, grab the tag that has the members uh, ID, set its class name equal to show. This is asking, is it equal to hide? This is actually saying set it to. Does that make sense? So if it's already hide, we set it to show. If it's not already hide, then we set it to hide. That's it. That's the whole thing to toggle it back and forth. Okay? Take a look at that code um, and make sure you, I'm less worried about you typing it because, again, I'm going to give you the code for free at the end of the class. I'm more worried do you understand it. Okay, make sure you understand what's happening there. Are there any questions about how it's working? Okay, let's test it. Refresh, and here we go. I click to show, and now it says click to hide. I click to hide, and it hides them. I click to show, and it shows them back and forth. Okay, now just for um, making it easier to see without having to scroll, I'm going to move that whole thing right here in my HTML. 
up to right below the H1. Okay, so now it's up there. So now if I click it, it shows the members, and now it's saying click to hide. It's going back and forth. So I'm using JavaScript to manipulate this element right here, which is the H2, and this right here, which is the UL. That's it. Okay? What questions do we have about that? You feel okay? Okay, let's take a look at the code one last time, the JavaScript. Again, I'm less worried about you typing it. I'm more worried about do you understand it. Okay? The only piece you have to memorize is right here as far as um, get interacting with the DOM. If you memorize that, then the rest of the stuff will come by the little trick I'm going to show you, okay? So that's our first function. Feel pretty good about that? Okay, questions? Okay, next up, I want a function. I want to put a um, button right here that when I click it, this image right here will change. And if you download these files, you'll see in the image folder there are two images here. One's called Europe 1, one's called Europe 2. So I want to toggle those back and forth. Now, I'm going to write some code that's going to be partially correct, but I wouldn't copy it if I were you because it's going to be a little bit, there's going to be a problem with it that I want you to see that you're going to run into if you're not careful, okay? So what I want to do, though, right now we're looking at Europe 1, okay? I want to switch it to Europe 2 when I click this button. So let's make the button first. Okay, heading over here to our index, and we can actually just use the button object or the button uh, tag, and I'll put it. Um, we'll put it right between. We'll put it right. Yeah, I'll put it right here. Okay, button, and um, I'm going to when I click on the button, I'm going to do something right. So I need the on click attribute, and the button's title is going to be you know, toggle image or something like that, okay? So right here's the function we're going to create. What are we going to call the function? Anybody have any ideas? Sure. Um, yes, if you click on the image, you could. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so his question was, can I do it to where if I just click on the image? Um, the only reason I want to put the button there so you can clearly see that there's something telling us we're supposed to, to click on it because otherwise somebody may not know to click on the image. But yeah, you could totally do that. Uh, okay, so what, um, what's a good name for this function? It can be whatever you want. Switch image. Switch image. Go for that. Switch image. The only reason I'm having you guys name it because I want you to know it can literally be whatever you want. Okay? So let's go into the JavaScript, make our function. Function. Switch image. Right, that's the setup for all functions. Okay. Now, what we want to do currently, I want to get my hands on that image, right? So, document dot get element by ID, and the ID is going to be whatever that image's ID is, which I believe does not have one at the moment. Okay. So let's look at that image, right here, Europe image, ID equals whatever, Europe image, okay? And I'm going to copy and paste this piece right here. Okay, so right now I'm going to target the Europe, Europe image. So again, what is this line saying? Look in the document, go find a tag that has the ID of Europe image, look at its source, and set it equal to Europe 2, right? That's the other image, okay? Now, this is the line of code. It will work for the moment, but moving forward, this will be a problem, okay? So you may want to stand by for just a minute before you copy this, okay? All right, so that, does everybody understand what I did, though, based the basics there of what I'm doing, all right? So I, again, looking in the document, finding a tag, that has Europe image as the ID, looking at its source, setting its source to that. So let's run it. Refresh. 
Oh, thank you. I knew that. I was just testing it. Also, before I toggle that, I'm going to style it real quick. Button, and we'll just give it a padding of 10, a uh, margin of 7 pixels. That's good enough, I think. Yeah, it's better. Okay, so now when I click it, you ready? This will work. Watch when I click. It switched the image, okay? Uh, let me also put a cursor in there. Cursor. Okay, so this works. When I click the image, toggle button, then it switches the image. However, here's where it's going to get tricky. Let's take a look at our JavaScript. Now, a minute ago, when we were doing this thing down here with the toggling of the members, we decided that in one scenario, we would run one block of code, and the other scenario, we would run the other block of code, right? So in one situation, this is the code we want to run. Agreed? The other scenario, we want to run this block of code, right? We want to do the same thing, create an if statement. Okay? So if something, we'll talk about the something in a minute. Do this. Else. Do this. Okay? This is just like what we did a minute ago, right? So the question is, what goes in our if statement? Well, before, we just would have taken this thing right here, right? We would have said something like this. If source is equal to image 1, do this, right? Does that make sense? And if otherwise, do this. Problem is, this actually won't work. Okay, and I'll show you why in a minute, but let me prove to you that it doesn't work. We refresh. I click toggle image. It works. It doesn't even work the first time because this condition actually is false, believe it or not. We th I thought it was true, right? That's the image that's in there. Doesn't it seem like it should be true? Turns out it's false. Okay, now look. In our HTML, it's showing that this, that's the source right there, isn't it? And so that seems like, is not what I'm saying here? But it's still false. Okay, and I'm going to show you why. Other than that little weirdness, do you guys understand what we're what we're shooting for here so far? Okay, let's look at why this isn't working. To the DOM. So if you click on uh, elements on the top portion here, and then down below here, you have this other section called properties. Click on properties. And now in the, the HTML portion up here, on the right, I'm gonna click on that image that we're trying to manipulate. So I click on the image, Notice down here that that image now appears. Okay, right here. Remember in the JavaScript I said, when you have this, you have the whole image, right? That's the whole image and everything that the image knows about. Here's what the image knows about. All of this stuff in purple here. This is what the image knows about. All this stuff you have access to manipulate with your JavaScript. This is all part of the DOM API and the whole the way the DOM interacts with your, your, your document. But all this stuff here in purple, I can manipulate that in my JavaScript. Okay? So let's take a look at what's going on here. The, the property I tried to grab was source, right? So I'm looking at this image here, and if I scroll down the purple to source, right here, look at what source's value is. It's a, it's, a, it's a direct file path, right? It's not just the relative file path. Now, if I wanted to, watch, let, me, let me show you. I can copy that, and I could put this right here and run that. And now it works just fine, okay? But what's the problem with me doing that? Exactly right. If I upload this to a server, there is no file colon C users JSTOAN 54 desktop. That doesn't exist on my server. So this, this is not a good solution. Okay, so we can't do this. So let's undo that and see if we can figure out how. What I'm looking for is somewhere that has this value, just that value. And so one of these properties down here I'm, look, I'm hoping, and, and I know that it will end up this way, but I'm hoping that one of these things down here has that value in it. So if I scroll through here, I'm looking for 
the the phrase, you know, Europe 2.jpg, or if I refresh it, Europe 1, okay? Uh, Europe 1.jpg. Just, just, I'm just looking for image Europe 1. I'm not looking for all this other crap. And if you scroll through, we're going to find out we don't see anything obvious sticking out here. All these are null, right? None of these are going to have it. This is close, right? It's the whole tag <laughs> itself, but not what we're looking for, okay? However, a very good place to look is in what's called the attributes property right here, okay? So if I expand the attributes property, you can see that it's showing that it has this, this image tag, because that's what we're selecting right here, right? Here's the image tag. This is right here, is representing this right here, okay? Inside of there is this attributes right here. This is the property of it. Well, what's inside of there? There's an ID. There's a source. Well, look at that. There's an ID, and there's a source. So this attributes, it's actually an array, which we'll learn about later, okay? But it's an array that holds all of the actual attributes that are inside of that image tag, okay? And we'll learn that in depth later, okay? Don't worry too much about that right now. But here's the thing. If I expand this attributes thing, it now shows there's the ID and everything that's related to it. There's the source and everything that's related to it. If I scroll down through source, I will see node value right here, right? This node value, and that's what I'm looking for right there. So I need this property. I need, you know, like attributes dot source, right, dot node, node value or something like that, right? But I told you you wouldn't have to memorize any of that crap. You don't. Once you find the property you're looking for, right-click on it. Go down to copy property path, and you've just copied that whole file path, that whole property path into your buffer. And so now, if I go in here, I can paste it right there. Okay? So that way you li literally don't have to remember anything but this. This is the element you want. This is the property of that element that you want. That one thing will fix the problem. This will now run properly. Okay? So before I run it, any questions conceptually what we just did there? Can you show me how I found that again? So, show you how I found the, the node value? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. If you go... Um, so up here, and did you are you clicked on properties down here? Yeah, I don't know how you found node value. It was under attributes. It's uh, yeah, under attributes, right? So, so under attributes, and then under source, because I am looking for the source property, right? And then under source, if I scroll down, there's the node value. Where to go? Right there. Yep. And then if I and if you hover over it too, you can see it too. See that? But if I right click on it, it gives it to me. Now. Uh, there's a, I mean, there's so much stuff in here. You can select anything you want. And so one of the, the knacks of getting used to uh, using the DOM API is figuring out how to navigate this little property window here. And we have another lecture coming up called um, Advanced DOM or something like that, like uh, DOM in detail or something like that, where we're going to go into this way more in depth. But this is just a quick little view of what's to come. And so you can kind of understand what's happening here. But hopefully that gives you enough information to trust me when I say you only have to memorize that. You do not have to memorize anything that goes after it because you can find it in the DOM preview down there, okay? So now let's run this, make sure it works. And, oh, I need to refresh it first. Okay, toggle image, and there we go. And notice right here, watch over here on the right. Watch that code right there when I click the button. It goes from one to two, from one to two, right? So we're toggling all that. Okay, now to Jared's point, can you make it to where it works when you click on the image? Sure. A really easy way to do that, check this out. If I just add on this image, the on click, and I call um, switch, was it called switch image? What we called it? Yeah. If I call that switch image function, then that's all I need to do. Because that switch image function, no matter where you click it from, it's going to toggle the image. That's its job. Okay, so if I run it now and refresh, I click on the image. Uh oh. Did I spell it wrong? Switch image. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes, okay, 
Let me tell you what happened. Let me solve the problem first, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to move the on click to the end here. Now, order doesn't matter, but let me tell you why it sort of matters here. When I run it, that will solve the problem. Okay, see how it works now just fine? Here's what happened. Let's take a look back down in here. This is the attribute array. Look at the array here. The first element in the array is ID. The second element in the array is the source. The third element in the array is the on click. Okay, well, the, in the, the case of source, it's actually ID number one. So you notice over here in our code, sorry about that. We are referring to attribute number one. Attribute number one was um, source. When I put on click in front of it, source became attribute number two. That makes sense? I'm seeing a couple blank looks. Does that, does that make sense what happened? So let me switch it, okay? So if I put on click back to the left, save it. Take a look right now. I'm gonna refresh the page in a minute, but at the moment, um, in computers, we start at zero rather than one. So the first element in anything is actually the zeroth element, right? So the zeroth element is ID, the first element is source, and the second element is on click. It's in that order, zero, one, two. When I refresh it, and I expand this, attributes, well actually, now look, the zeroth element is on click. The first element is ID, and the second element is source. So now when I'm right here referring to number one, I'm not referring to source anymore, I'm referring to ID. If I just change that to a two, that will also solve the problem. Everybody follow that? Make sense? Questions? Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at two, that works fine. We'll refresh it, make sure I'm not full of it. You never know. And sure enough it works, okay? Toggle works, image works. I'm gonna put a little hover mouse on that image as well, and then we'll move on. Okay, so just an image, cursor, pointer. Okay, so now if I click on it, if I hover over it, it's cleared, I'm supposed to do something. All right, any questions thus far? Let me go back to the JavaScript here for just a minute. Okay, the next thing I want to do before we get into the third JavaScript functionality, I want to modify a couple things in the style here a little bit. Uh, I want this to have a hover effect, the click to show members. So what we're going to do here in our CSS is uh, just give that a hover, h2 member heading hover, and we'll say color is that color, I think, and we'll give it a little transition, color, 500 milliseconds, that should be good, mm-hmm, what I miss, maybe that's what the color already is, let's try another one just to make sure, right? going on. Oh, the space right there. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, let's go back to that. CCC or 333. Let's see how that looks. Well, it's so subtle. Man. It's like 555. I do the number of the beast. Perfect. Because, you know, Europe, they're like a satanic band, right? <laughs> Come on, folks, I'm kidding. Okay, there we go, that's good. Okay, um, so uh, any questions about anything we've covered so far? You good? All right, next up, I want to put a button here. In fact, maybe we'll get rid of that toggle image button because we've got this working on the image itself. We'll replace that toggle image button with the one that's going to manipulate the font, okay? 
And so I want, when I click on this button here, so let's go quickly change its title to, um, we'll get a different function in there we haven't defined yet. And we're going to say change font, okay? So now we have this button that's called change font. When I click it, something's going to happen over here, okay? How, again, do we want to make that work? What's a good way to change the style on something? How do we change the style on something? Yeah, CSS, right? Cascading style sheet, right? CSS, very good. Okay, so let's make a, uh, a class or whatever that will be different font. Let's get fancy here. I think we got enough time. Let's make it toggle through three instead of just two, okay? So here's our default. Let's go ahead and give that, um, in order to control this a little bit better, I'm going to wrap these, these paragraphs in a div tag so we can just target the one div. I'm going to call this class equal to um, main content, okay? So you see what happens here. The relationship between CSS, JavaScript, and HTML, as you're programming your CSS or your, or your JavaScript, you'll, you'll realize, oh, maybe I need to change my HTML structure a little bit to make it easier to manipulate, right? That's kind of what's happening here. And I'm going to make that not class main content, but ID equals main content, okay? So now I can, I can target IDs with CSS, and I can target IDs with JavaScript. Easy. All right, so let's start with taking a look in our style here and see how those paragraphs are styled up right now. Right now, this is what we've got for the paragraphs. So let me remove that completely and see what happens. Okay, so that's what we get if we don't style it, right? Hideous. So what I'm going to do is just change this to where it's, it's not just the paragraphs, but it's the ones that are inside of main content, right? Which, it's the same thing, okay? Make sense? All right. So that's back to where we were. Looks good. Now what we want to do is we're going to change our level of specificity, right? And so we're going to target this. Now, this is all CSS right now, folks. No JavaScript, okay? So this is stuff you should know. So I'm going to create a class called, um, you know, change1 or something like that, right? That's, that's, that's one of our fonts. Okay, we could get more creative with the names if we want, but we'll go with this for now. And we'll do change2, okay? So that's the basic idea, right? We're going to apply either the change one or the change two. Um, actually, let's back up. Um, we can do we can do this, but it's a little bit trickier. So I want to give you some simple CSS here or uh, JavaScript. So we're going to change this. We're going to make it like this. Um, div hashtag sorry octothorpe main content dot um, uh, change one okay that means it has the id of that and the class of this that's a new way that we haven't selected before oh uh, yes all right so now let's just test this make sure we can get this to work so let's just go uh, color red for change one. Don't worry about the JavaScript yet. And this is a, an important thing to understand when you're making this kind of stuff. Um, get the CSS to work, then just manually test it before you try doing it with the JavaScript. Because if you don't, you may think your JavaScript's wrong, but it turns out your CSS is wrong. Or maybe your CSS and your JavaScript are right, but the way you wrote it in the HTML is wrong, right? So baby steps. So let's go in here, and we're going to add to this class equals change one. That should make the paragraphs turn red, okay? And it does. So we know our CSS works correctly. That was the goal of that, okay? And so this is a selector we haven't really talked about. 
which is where you're selecting multiple, like an ID and a uh, class right here. Okay, that's okay. Now you know. All right, so let's make a couple more changes. Let's go um, font family, make it chiller. Font size is um, like 55 pixels. So that's what it's going to look like when we put change one on it. Okay? And you can make yours whatever you want. That's fine. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, now let's look at change two. Let's make the color like um, blue. Font family. It's a good font family. Let's find. Um, this one's appropriately hideous. Let's go with this one. Spicy rice. Okay, so let's get this guy right here, put it in our HTML. Whoa. Put that in our HTML right here. And, oh, actually, I can just tag this in here. Okay, so now we've got that, and this how do we target it right here? So we'll put that in our CSS right here, and uh, we'll make the font size like 30 pixels. All right, so let's try that. We'll change our class here to number two, see if it worked. And it appears to have worked. It's hideous and ugly, but conceptually we get the idea, right? This is just CSS. This is nothing new. This is just a couple different classes we're trying out. So the goal is to toggle through all three of those, right? We got 10 minutes to pull this off. Think we can do it? Can I get an amen? <laughs> Weak, man. All right. Hallelujah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so what we want to do is... When we click on that button right there, uh, where's the button? Right there. On click, let's, uh, what, toggle font? Does that work? Okay, that's what we'll call it. Okay. Let's go into our script. And again, we type function, toggle font. Okay, that's the easy part, right? Creating the function. Now, what do we want to do? We want to cycle through three different class names, or, well, two different class names, and one with nothing, right? In fact, why don't we, just for fun, come in here to the div and give its class is starting up default. That's it. We'll give it the class of default, okay? And then our CSS here, we will make this right here dot default. Everybody follow what I just did? So now I've got three different ways of targeting that div main content. If the class is default, do that. If it's change one, do that. If it's change two, do that. Right now we're starting with default. Okay, that's all I did. All right, so here we go. Again, we need to target the document dot get element by ID. So we're gonna say if document get element and whatever that element is dot class name is equal to default okay let's pause there take a look what is the name its main content right everybody follow so I'm targeting main content so main content okay so my statement here my question is is go in the document, find an element that has the ID of main content, that'll give us that div, look at its class name. If the class name is default, do this. Well, what's the this we want to do? We want to change the class name, set it equal to uh, change one. Agreed? If it's not de default, maybe it's change one. So let's check for that. So we'll say 
else if it's change one, then set it to change two. So far so good? Okay, so again, I'm saying if the class name is default, change it to change one. If it's not default, then is it change one? Or if it is, set it to change two. If it's neither of those two, else, then we're gonna set it to default. Sorry, a lot of copy and pasting going on here. That should do it. So let's, I'm gonna pause the video, I want you guys to look at that code and make sure you understand it. So the question that was just asked was, um, these two here, what does that mean basically? And it means this, this is the comparison operator for is this equal to this? This statement down here says this is being assigned this. So a single equal sign is me assigning the value a double equal sign is me asking the question, are they equal to each other, right? Good question. Other questions? Let's run it. Make sure it works before we get too in-depth, because you never know. I might have a bug or something. There's the default. So if I click Change Font, it goes to the red one. If I click it again, it goes to the blue one. If I click it again, it should go back to the black one. It should cycle through those three, okay? Now, what's cool about this, if I wanted to add a fourth one, or a third one, I guess, so a default, and one and two, so another one. I can do that, right? I can just copy this, and we'll call it change three, and we'll do something like, we'll give the color um, Indian red, I believe is a color. I'll do, we'll do salmon, salmon. And we'll make the font family is something plain like Tahoma. We'll make the font size um, 20, and let's give it a lot of margin and pad, a lot of padding, like 30 pixels or something like that, right? So now that's this the next style. Let's come over here in our JavaScript, and we can just add another else if, right? And the else if will be if it's already set to change two, change it to change three. We're done. So it's very easy to add a whole bunch more to the toggle there, right? Now this code here is not the most streamlined. Okay, later we're gonna learn how to streamline this code a little bit right here. But for now, this is, remember, this is an introduction here. I just wanna give you the basic idea how to interact with the DOM. Okay, so if I refresh this, and let's give it a toggle, that's the number one, that's number two, here's our new one coming up. Oh, that actually looks pretty cool. Um, so ba back and forth, right, between all four of those. Okay. Now, why would this little silly feature of changing the font be useful? Maybe these ugly styles maybe not so useful, but the concept, why would that be useful? Accessibility. Yeah, accessibility, exactly right. People who have, um, maybe they're not fully blind, but they have, and there's a, I can't remember the exact technical term for it, but they can basically see if, if, if it's big enough, right? If the screen's big enough. Um, so that's, that's one. Um, maybe just somebody who's a little bit older that just their vision's not as good as it used to be kind of a thing. Uh, so you click on this and you can have an increased font size. And maybe what you want you could do is just have a plus and a minus where you plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. It just increases the font by a little bit at a time. You could totally do that. If we had more time, I'd show you how. But yeah, accessibility is a very good example for that. Um, so there's lots of different things you could do. Um, you've seen websites where you can set kind of your own theme, right? This is kind of that type of thing, okay? All right, any questions?